Welcome to the Words for Life podcast. I'm your host, Queen Esther Phillips. Did life ever get you down? You feel discouraged? Well, this is the place where you can get a word to lift you up. Here you can hear Bible-based messages and lessons to inspire and encourage you to live powerful and purposeful lives through faith in the living word, Jesus Christ. So we want to say thank you for listening to the Words for Life podcast. You're welcome. Be sure to share. Be sure to subscribe. And check us out. Connect with us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube. We ask your friends. Thank you for listening. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to the Words for Life podcast. I'm your host, Queen Esther Phillips. And once again, we want to say thank you so very much for tuning in to this podcast where you can receive words of inspiration and encouragement to help you live a purposeful, powerful, prayerful life through your faith in Jesus Christ as a believer and a follower of His. So, Can you believe this year is almost over? We are at the end of 2019. And we are looking forward to the year 2020. Oh, that sounds so alien. 2020 is upon us. And so, uh, with that in mind, we uh, want to share with you uh, these words of encouragement and uh, talk to you about uh, I feel like going on. Yes. I feel like going on. Doesn't matter what it looks like, what I've been through, what's in the past. I'm looking forward to the future. And I feel like going on. I'm excited about it. I hope you can tell. Yes, I'm excited. Glory to God. So listen, our passage of scripture that we want to focus on comes from Philippians, the third chapter, verse 13 and 14 and if you're a Bible scholar you attend Bible study then perhaps you are uh, familiar with this passage of scripture but hear what it says this is Paul's letter to the church at Philippi and he says forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Every year there is an event that takes place and it is called uh, Press On Regardless Rally. Press On Regardless Rally. It's held, uh, it's a car race and it's held, uh, used to be in uh, northern Michigan or somewhere up north where the weather is gets horrible. <laughs> so, uh, This race is very unusual, and what makes it rare is the conditions under which the race takes place. First of all, the track is covered with snow and ice, and the the weather conditions are really terrible. It's either raining or sleeting or snowing during the entire race. Because of this, uh, water freezes on the windshield that prevents the drivers from having the proper vision to see outside the car. So finally, the race takes place at night, which means that the only light that the drivers have to help them see is their headlights. The drivers of the cars in this race press on through the bad weather that blocks their view and through the icy roads where they skid and slide and try to win the race. The point is, they do not let these bad weather conditions prevent them 
from pressing onward to win the race. My brothers and my sisters, this is the attitude or this is the way it's supposed to be with us while we are running this Christian race. Nothing is supposed to stop us from pressing onward to win the race and the prize that God has waiting for us at the end of this race. We cannot let anyone or anything slow down our progress forward as we run this Christian race. We cannot even let ourselves impede us as we press on our way onward. First of all, we cannot let it outside forces stop us or stop our progress as we press onward in this Christian race. Paul expressed his this thought about <clears throat> letting anything, not letting anything, rather stop us from doing what is required of us. When he wrote these words uh, in the 8th chapter of Romans, listen to what he said. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Then he goes on to say, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Glory to God. So the important thing to note here is that Paul was determined not to let anything or anyone separate him from the love of God. Paul realized that if he and the love of God grew apart, it would be his fault and not God's fault. <laughs> so often, we like to blame God when we feel that he is distant or when he's not answering our prayers or if we don't feel that closeness. We can't blame God. God is always present. His love is everlasting. It is unfailing. So Paul realized if he and the love of God grew apart, it was his fault and not God's. For the verse goes on and reads, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Not who shall separate the love of Christ from us. <laughs> God's love is constant and will always be there. Nothing, 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 my brothers and sisters, nothing would turn away the love that God has for us. When man sinned in the garden, God knew that he would. But he already had a plan. And that plan was to send his only begotten son to die for our sins because he loved us. For God so loved the world huh, that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God's love is constant. We are the ones who turn our backs on God's love. By sinning and living unholy and ungodly and doing all the things that God does not want us to do. Therefore, we are the ones who cause the separation to occur by letting other people or things or objects come between us and the love of Christ. Just like Paul was determined not to let anything or anybody separate him from the love of God, we we should not let anything or anybody stop us from pressing our way forward in this Christian race. Then, we cannot even let ourselves stop us from pressing our way onward. What? Stop ourselves? Exactly. We need to realize that we and we ourselves are the only ones that can stop us from moving forward in this Christian race. We do not have anyone else but ourselves to blame. As I stated, yes, we like to blame others. We like to blame God. But it is only us that can stop us from moving onward in this Christian race. So often we use the expression, the devil made me do it when we have done something wrong. It was Flip Wilson that coined that phrase, the devil made me do it. The devil 
or anyone else might suggest you to you to do something that you have no business doing, such as cheating, lying, stealing. Ah, the long list of things that we do to fulfill the lust of our flesh. But you are, we are personally, personally, we are the only one who chooses to do that. It does not even matter if someone strongly suggests that you do something wrong. Hold a gun to your head, threaten to do bodily harm. You are the one who actually makes the choice as to whether you want to do it or not. Hmm. Nobody can make you do anything that you truly and honestly do not want to do. People can't, the devil can't, or even God himself, because you have free will. Therefore, you and you alone are the only one responsible for stopping you from running forward in this race. You have no one else to blame. Don't blame family, don't blame blame friends, or even your enemies. Since this is the case, you must be determined within yourself that you will keep pressing onward in this Christian race that you are running despite any obstacles, any setbacks. You must be determined that you will keep pressing onward. The Apostle Paul gives us some advice found in our text that will help us to press onward in this Christian race. The first thing that we must do is to forget those things that are behind us. Then we must reach forth to those things that are before us. First of all, we must forget those things that are behind us. As long as we hold on to things from the past, we will have a very very hard time trying to move forward. Therefore, we need to let go of those things from our past that we're clinging to so dearly if we want to, key word, if we want to press our way onward in this Christian race. I believe that Paul does not mean for us to totally forget about the past when he gives us this advice. Now, because there have been some valuable lessons that we have learned in the past that will help us as we continue into the present and the future. Trial and error, we call it. I'm sure that Paul does not want us to forget those things from our past that taught us valuable lessons. What Paul is telling us when he gives us this advice, is that we cannot waste time thinking about our past. There are some people who do nothing but waste their valuable time thinking about the things that happened to them in the past. There are some people who rest upon their achievements and do nothing else. They do nothing. They do not do anything else. They tell stories about what good things they did 10 or 20 years ago and haven't done a thing since then. Then there are people who spend a lot of their precious time dwelling upon the negative things that happened in their lives. Their failures, their grudges, how they've been lied on and how they've been heard and talked about and all that negative stuff. It is so much easier for us to dwell on the negative than to look forward to a promising future and look for things that are positive. I believe there is one negative area that people spend a lot of time thinking about. And this area that I'm talking about is missed opportunities. Living with regret. Missed opportunities and regret have caused people countless hours of sleepless nights. It has stopped many dead in their tracks when, with no desire to move forward. It has caused many people to become depressed and despondent because they look at how far up the road they could have been in life if they would have taken advantage of that missed opportunity. The woulda, coulda, shoulda 
<laughs> syndrome. It has caused many people to become upset with the world, with their family, their friends, and even themselves. Therefore, we must stop dwelling on those things in the past that prevent us from going forward if we really want to move on with in this Christian race. I'm going to repeat. We must stop dwelling on those things in the past that prevent us from going forward if we really want to move forward. Then, also, we must reach forth unto those things that are before us. If a person has something to look forward to, it makes it easier for him or her to press onward, to keep going to church even when you don't feel like it. To keep reading your Bible. Keep going to, to a Bible study. Keep just pressing on. Even if it doesn't look good. You don't feel good. Keep pressing. Because you have something to look forward to. It's called hope. It is called expectation. <laughs> yes. So Paul tells the people at the church at Philippi. That they must now reach forward to that. Which is before them in the race. They must strain every nerve and muscle and use every ounce of their strength to win. Hallelujah. Their future depends on it. In effect, Paul is comparing a Christian to a runner in a race. The runner has his eyes on nothing but the finish line and crossing it first to win. The closer he gets to the finish line, the harder he runs to finish. The Christian is like a runner in that he has only one goal in mind. That is to see Jesus and have eternal life. Everything that a Christian does is set around this goal. Paul is telling us that we need to do the same thing today. We must also concentrate all of our attention and energy on doing those things that God has for us to do today. There is no time to dwell on the past, but we must set out to do what God has placed before us. Your past is just that. It is behind you. There are certain benefits and rewards that God has waiting for those who are tr who tried their best with all their abilities to press onward. There are certain things that we can look forward to receiving at the end of life's journey if we have done the best that we could to press our way onward. First of all, we do not have to worry or fear death when we have pressed our way to the best of our abilities. For Paul wrote these words in 2 Timothy 4 verses 6-8. When he said when he was ready to die. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have stayed the course. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only. But unto all them. Also, that love his appearing. Paul could not have written these words if he did not press his way onward until his time was up. These words could not have been uttered by Paul. Hallelujah. If he had not tried to the best of his abilities to do all the things that God wanted him to do. Therefore, we do not have to fear death. When we have tried our best to do the will of God in our lives. And live out his purpose for our lives. We can expect to receive a crown of life one day. If we press onward until the end of this Christian race that we find ourselves in. Jesus promised us this when he told John these words recorded in Revelation 2 and 10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. We can also look forward to dwell in the city of the New Jerusalem. We will have the chance to walk up and down those streets of gold. We will get the opportunity to live in a land where there is no sorrow 
and no pain. We will get the opportunity to meet the person that every child of God is looking forward to seeing one day, Jesus Christ himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we must continue to press onward in this Christian race. We must not let anyone, including ourselves, or anything stop us from doing so. We must forget about and let go of those things from the past that hinder us from going forward. We must press onward to do the things that God has waiting for us to do. For if we do these things, we will receive benefits that God has waiting for us at the end of this race. And as we prepare to enter into 2020, 2019 will be over. It will be our past. It will be behind us. And hopefully, as we look forward to 2020, we will be determined that what God has for us in 2020, we will be determined to press into it, to reach forth, and do all that God has for us to do. And we will reap the benefits, for He is faithful who promised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, we just thank you so very much for this word of encouragement. I pray that you that it will penetrate the very core of our beings, that those that will hear the podcast will embrace and be inspired and motivated. And whatever concerns they have about the past, uh, whether it's just yesterday or a month, a year, or years in the past, I pray, Father God, that they release that and that they will press onward in this Christian race and allow you to lift those burdens and they will cast their cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you so very much. Hallelujah. And as this year comes to a close, we pray, Lord God, we pray fervently that your will be done, that your kingdom come, that your will be done in our lives. We don't know all that you have prepared for us in this new year, but we say yes to you, Lord, because whatever it is that you allow, whatever plans and purpose that you have for us, we know that all things work together for our good because we love you and we are the called according to your purpose. Hallelujah. And so we say thank you and we decree and declare, hallelujah, according to Apostle Paul. We are forgetting those things which are behind. Hallelujah. And we're reaching forth unto those things which are before and we're pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This is our prayer and we pray with thanksgiving in the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus the Christ that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much once again for listening and we probably won't do another broadcast. So I want to go ahead and say happy Thanksgiving. And this uh, this is the will of God concerning us and everything. Give thanks. Amen. So we pray that you will have a blessed time together with your family and friends and enjoy this festive time of thanks. Even though we give thanks every day, This special day is set aside to give special thanks and to enjoy family and friends. So once again, we say thank you so very much. Thank you for listening to the podcast, the Words for Life podcast, and we pray that we are a blessing to you. If you would like to make a donation to this ministry, you can visit my website. It is uh, MajesticPublications.com, MajesticPublications.com. Come And there is a tab for donations. If this ministry is a blessing to you, uh, I appreciate your support. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen.